What if humanity decided it was time to leave the solar system for good? How would we even begin such an epic exodus? Forget science fiction. We're diving into the real engineering marvels and gravitational slingshot maneuvers that could propel a spacecraft towards the unknown. Discover the mind-bending routes to stars like Alpha Centauri and Barnard's star, and prepare to confront the truly immense timeframes involved. For all of human history, our stories, our wars, and our dreams have been confined to a single, fragile sphere. We have dipped our toes into the cosmic ocean, landing on the moon, sending robots to Mars, but we have never truly left the harbor. The solar system is our cradle, but as Konstantin Tsiolkovsky famously said, one cannot live in the cradle forever. To leave the sun's domain is the ultimate threshold. It is a journey not of miles, but of light years. It requires energy we barely possess, technology we are just beginning to imagine, and a navigational chart that spans the emptiness between the stars. If humanity decided today to pack its bags and leave the solar system, where would we go? And more importantly, how would we survive the path to get there? Why leave? It is the cosmic itch, a fundamental drive coded into our DNA. We migrated out of Africa, we sailed across unknown oceans, and now we look upward. But beyond curiosity, there is the imperative of survival. A single asteroid, a supervolcano, or a nuclear winter could erase our history. To ensure the human story continues, we must become a multi-stellar species. We have technically already begun. Voyager 1 and 2 are our first emissaries. Launched in the 1970s, they have crossed the heliopause, entering interstellar space. But they are drifting, not driving. Moving at roughly 17 kilometers per second, it would take Voyager tens of thousands of years to reach another star, if it were even headed toward one. It is a message in a bottle, not a colonization fleet. We need speed. Projects like Breakthrough Starshot are shifting the paradigm. Instead of massive arcs, they propose sending thousands of gram-scale probes, propelled by lasers to 20% the speed of light. This is our Escape Velocity project, the first attempt to reach another star within a human lifetime. But where is the destination? The obvious choice is Alpha Centauri, our celestial next-door neighbor, specifically Proxima Centauri, a red dwarf hosting a potentially habitable world. Just over four light years away, it is the easy target. But some astronomers look to Barnard's star six light years out. Older and more stable, it offers a different kind of harbor. The choice of destination dictates the path, and the path dictates the machine. To cross the abyss, fire is not enough. Chemical rockets, the workhorses that built the ISS and took us to the moon, are useless for interstellar travel. The fuel requirements would be heavier than the observable universe. To go to the stars, we must harness the power of the atom. The immediate next step is nuclear propulsion. Nuclear thermal rockets use a fission reactor to superheat hydrogen, expelling it at incredible speeds. It doubles the efficiency of chemical rockets. But even more ambitious is the concept of nuclear pulse propulsion, the Project Orion idea. Imagine a ship that rides the shock waves of atomic bombs detonated behind it. Brutal? Yes. Effective? Incredibly. It is one of the few technologies we could build today that could get a massive crewed ship to a fraction of light speed. For those who prefer elegance over brute force, there are ion drives and solar sails. Ion drives provide a gentle, constant push. Over days, they do little. Over a century, they can build up tremendous velocity. Solar sails, or more likely, light sails pushed by Earth-based lasers, offer a way to leave the fuel behind entirely. By riding a beam of light, a vessel could theoretically reach relativistic speeds, turning a thousand-year journey into a 40-year trip. And then, there is the frontier of physics, antimatter engines, the holy grail of energy density. A collision of matter and antimatter releases pure energy. 
the most efficient fuel possible. And beyond that lies the theoretical Alcubierre drive, warping space-time itself to bypass the speed limit of light. While currently the realm of equations and whiteboards, these are the technologies that would turn the galaxy into a backyard. Even with advanced engines, a smart traveler uses the terrain. In space, gravity is the terrain. We call it the gravitational slingshot. This is planetary billiards. Voyager used Jupiter and Saturn to steal momentum, flinging itself out of the solar system. For an interstellar vessel, a close flyby of the Sun, an Oberth maneuver, could provide a massive initial kick. We would dive deep into the gravity well of our star, fire our engines at the point of highest velocity, and ride the multiplier effect into the dark. As we leave, we pass the Oort cloud, a shell of icy debris surrounding our system. While too diffuse to offer significant gravity assists, these objects represent the last gas stations of home. Harvesting comets for hydrogen fuel here could provide the final push needed to sever our ties with the sun completely. But the true cosmic highways lie in the deep. If we could navigate close to a rogue planet wandering between stars, or better yet, a black hole, we could execute the ultimate gravity assist. By dipping into the ergosphere of a spinning black hole, a ship could theoretically steal rotational energy from the monster itself, catapulting towards a destination at speeds no engine could achieve alone. Space is not empty. When you are traveling at 20% the speed of light, a grain of dust hits with the force of a nuclear weapon. Mapping the trajectory is not just about the destination, it is about survival. A direct line to Alpha Centauri seems logical, but it might take us through denser regions of the interstellar medium. We may need to take scenic routes, following the path of least resistance, avoiding cosmic dust clouds and known debris fields. We would need shielding, layers of beryllium or electromagnetic fields to deflect the particles that clutter the void. Navigation becomes a nightmare. There is no GPS in the void we would rely on pulsars, rapidly spinning neutron stars that act as galactic lighthouses. By triangularizing their signals, a ship can pinpoint its location in the galaxy with precision. Every trajectory has a point of no return. The moment when the ship no longer has the fuel to turn back, or when Earth has drifted too far to receive a distress call in time. At this stage, the crew must establish interstellar waypoints deploying automated beacons to warn future travelers, or to relay data back home. They are blazing a trail through a jungle that has never known a footprint. The greatest challenge of leaving the solar system is not the rocket science. It is the human element. Unless we unlock warp drive or cryo sleep, these will be multi-generational voyages. The people who launch the ship will not be the ones to arrive. They will live age and die in the void, passing the torch to their children and their children's children. This requires self-sustaining vessels, closed loop ecosystems where every drop of water, every breath of air, and every gram of waste is recycled. The ship becomes a world unto itself. A distinct culture will evolve, separated from Earth by light years and centuries. They will be humans, but they will be Martians of the deep void, adapted to the ship, not the planet. And finally, there is the question of legacy. If we launch these ships, we are sending a message in a bottle to the future. We are saying that humanity refused to go gently into the night. Even if the ship fails, even if the colony never takes root, the attempt itself defines us. To leave the solar system is to accept that we are grown up. It is to walk out the front door of our childhood home, looking at the road ahead, unsure of where it leads, but knowing that we can never truly go back. The paths are there, waiting in the gravity and the starlight. We just have to decide to take the first step.